South Koreans are trading in their sedans for trucks and tractors, as tens of thousands of people now migrate from cities to country living each year. The trend began in the early 2000s and saw 40,000 urbanites move to rural areas last year alone. Longtime farmers welcome the move with a caution. When people first come from Seoul, they struggle because they have to adjust to farming and don't have experience. They don't know how to farm, and it's especially hard as farming requires a lot of manual labor. But as they talk and learn from their neighbors, they eventually adjust well. I think it's great that these people can discover a second career in farming, which they can do into their 70s and 80s. Shin Dong Ran left Seoul with her 60-year-old retired husband more than a decade ago. They had considered running a restaurant or driving a taxi, but their decision hinged on the benefits they have found in their new lives some 200 kilometers south of the capital. At first when I came to Yongju, I had asthma and respiratory issues, and I brought a whole bunch of medication with me, but here I don't need to take any medication. It does smell sometimes because it's the countryside, but the air is so clean and it's very quiet. It's very nice. Now I don't have to take any medication and threw it all away. Every person that moves from city to country saves South Korean society $1,500 a year in lowered utilities and reduced pollution. Many people returning to start up new farming enterprises are struggling, but a law passed this month will assist farming migrants with subsidies and training. South Koreans moving to the countryside may be driven by several factors. Giving up the city's rat race may seem cliché, but South Koreans work on average the longest hours and pay about the most money for their apartment homes of any people in the world. Two trends South Korea's country-bound migrants seek to reverse. Frank Smith, Press TV, Yongju.